as usual when Ustaz asked me to come, you know, to give khatira, I always say yes, inshallah, next week I will be given the khutbah as well. So alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen, and knowing that uh, Ustaz got the visa at last minute, subhanallah, uh, this, is, this is like khatira right now. We can make khatira around this. Why? Because from my experience, and um, I'm sure it's from your experience as well, is that whenever you have or someone has the niyyah to perform hajj, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make way for them. Subhanallah. When you go, f make the niyyah. We always say, make the niyyah. Just say, Ya Allah, allow, to, allow me to perform hajj. And you will see miracles happening. Wallahi. Wallahi. When you go there and you hear the stories, how did you come? They will tell you, subhanAllah, I never expected. But I made the niyyah. Why is it important to make niyyah to go for hajj, inshallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unite all of us in Jabal Arafat. Say Allahumma ameen. It's important to make niyyah for hajj because if you have make the, the right niyyah, intention, and you don't get to go there, you still get, the, inshallah, the ajr for hajj, inshallah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for shahada, Sincerely, someone want to die shaheed, for sabilillah, sincerely, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him the manzila, the level of shuhada and shaheed, even if he dies on his embed. If he dies in his house, he will get the reward for that. The same thing, using the same analogy, subhanallah for hajj. So for the brothers and sisters who did not make the niyyah yet, please do make the niyyah, inshallah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open up the doors for you. This is farad. This is just like performing salah, right? And do not fall into the trap of shaitan that you will wait until you get old you know do whatever you want in dunya in your young age and then when you get old go for hajj and have your sins forgiven and khalas subhanallah now we don't fool allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we fool ourselves because if you wait first of all you never know you're gonna be able to make it or not all right hajj is becoming more expensive nowadays hajj is becoming more difficult nowadays right Huh? It's become more difficult. So make your niyyah when you're young, inshallah. So when you go there, at least you can perform the rituals. Now, khwani, why hajj is important? And what are the objectives of hajj? You know, everything in Islam has a reason. Nothing is random. In, we say Islam is a way of life. So it doesn't make sense that you have something that is random in Islam. Every single ibadah, every single act of worship from Islam it has a reason, okay? Take Salah, for example. We here, we came to the Masjid, Alhamdulillah, we performed Salat Al-Asha. You know, it's 10.30, it's almost midnight, SubhanAllah, may Allah reward you. But we came here and we put our forehead, our jabha, our faces on the ground to show humility to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. You're saying to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, Ya Allah, I am tired, I've been working the whole day, but out of hub, out of mahabbat, out of humility, I'm coming to put my face in the Masjid, close to the middle of the night. Subhanallah. This is the objective of Salah, to achieve this. All right? What about zakah? Solidarity. There is solidarity. The ghani, the wealthy, shares with the poor, the needy ones. And then take, for example, Ramadan, discipline. Ramadan teaches discipline. Your stomach is crying, feed me, feed me. Yet you're saying, not yet. Not yet. You discipline yourself. This is Ramadan. Right? The hajj is the ibadah that a lot of people don't understand the purpose of it. What is the purpose of Hajj? And wallahi, wallahi, you hear a lot of questions from Muslims yani that, that shows you that it, they don't understand the, the concept of Hajj, the essence of Hajj. All right? So quickly, inshallah, I mean, let's talk about some of the objectives of Hajj. Because people don't understand, Shaykh, why do we have to go around the Kaaba? Well, when you go around the Kaaba, you go around the Kaaba, you start from the left. Why from the left and not from the right? And why seven times? All right? Why Sa'im as Safa al Mara? What's the concept of Ihram? Why all of that? These are questions and a lot of people don't have answer to them, all right? But there are answers to everything in Islam. The answer is, سَمِعْنَا وَأَطَعْنَا Can we say it? And that's the difference. Surah Al-Baqarah, it revolves around this. سَمِعْنَا وَأَطَعْنَا Bani Israel, they said, سَمِعْنَا وَأَصَعْنَا We heard and we disobeyed. We're not going to do that. إِذْبَحُوا بَقَرَةً We're not going to do this. How does it look like? What does it look like? All right? Tell us a little bit more about Al-Baqarah. We don't want to do it. But at the end of the surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Sami'na wa ta'na. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to you and I, go perform hajj. And when you go perform hajj, technically speaking, when you go to the masjid, when you go to the masjid, what's the first thing you do? What, what do you, what's the first thing? You sleep? No, right? What's the first thing you do? 
you, no, no dua, you pray tahiyat al-masjid, correct? Yes. So when you go for Umrah, what's the first thing you do? Can you pray tahiyat al-masjid? You go for tawaf, correct? Right. You don't pray tahiyat al-masjid. Oh, why? This is the masjid, epic is the masjid, and the haram masjid, haram is the masjid. But over here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells me to pray, according to the Prophet sallam, pray to rakat tahiyat al-masjid, and over there he says, make tawaf. You know why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Rabb al-bayt. And when you own the house, you make the rules. Okay? If I come to visit your house, inshallah, you make the rules. Come here, leave your shoes over here. Okay? Sit in this couch, right? I follow your rules, yeah? It's time to eat, it's time to drink, and so on and so forth. Correct? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Rabb al-bayt. He tells us, when you come to epic, make tahiyat al-masjid. When you go al-masjid haram, make tawaf. And in both scenarios, in both cases, we say, sami'na wa ata'na. Why do we perform hajj? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us to do so. Sami'na wa ata'na. That's number one. Then, if there is a room for questions, alhamdulillah, khayr, it's not blind faith. We ask questions also, right? Now, the second objective, ikhwani, the first objective is spiritual. So if someone asks you, what's the objective of a hajj? That's number one. Another point from the spiritual objectives of hajj is, al-hajj is a small image from the day of judgment. Literally, al-hajj takes you on a journey to the day of judgment without even realizing. Right? From the moment, and I'm going to link, by the way, hajj is very similar to the last ihram particularly, is very similar to the last day we're going to leave this dunya. And I'm going to tell you what is the link, inshallah, and hopefully we'll end with this, inshallah. All right? So when you make ihram, ya khwani, when you make ihram, when you, put, you, when you put your ihram on, when you leave your town, you're leaving everything behind. You're leaving the family, work, business, everything. And you're going voluntarily to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You take your clothes off and you put ihram, Correct? You do that yourself, voluntarily. No one is doing that for you. So you're saying, Ya Allah, I'm coming on this journey. I'm taking on this journey, inshallah, voluntarily. So when the day comes, when you decide to take my soul, Ya Allah, you forgive my sins. Because guess what? When we leave this dunya, what is going to happen? Someone else is going to take our clothes off. Someone else is going to give us the ghusl. Correct? Someone else. Do we have a, do we have a choice at that, at that time? No, you don't. But when you go for Hajj, you absolutely have a choice. You book the package yourself, you book the tickets yourself, you decide on the date and so on and so forth, correct? Right? But when you leave this dunya, you're not gonna have the option. So when you go there, you take your clothes off, put the haram on, it just reminds you of the day you're gonna leave this dunya, subhanAllah. But the difference is that when you leave the dunya, you have absolutely no, have no choice, right? You have to go. And someone else had to take your clothes off. And someone else has to put the kaf and the shroud. You see, the, the shroud is very similar to ihram. Subhanallah. That's why the hajj takes you on that journey. Right? For those who went for hajj and you go to the miqat and you put the, you know, the ihram on, you remember this moment that when you leave this dunya, subhanallah, someone else is going to do this for me. So, Ya Allah, forgive my sins. Ya Allah, shower me with your mercy on that day. Right? So, you learn this from hajj when you go there. And we told the hajjij, when I gave the workshop, I told them, when you take your clothes off and put the haram, take the sins and ma'asi and the dhunub and all of these things off with it. All right? And when you go there, when you go there, al-hajj, subhanallah, al-bayt, al haram remind yourself that the Kaaba, you see the Kaaba, but on top of it, there is Bayt al-Ma'mur, 70,000 angels, right? They go, they enter and masjid al-Bayt al-Ma'mur every single, every single day, 70,000. So it's not just about, it's about us human beings. The angels also are doing the same thing. There is a new malakut, a new world, subhanAllah. You learn this from Hajj Akhwani. Another objective, the social objective, the fact that everyone is going there for one purpose. You know how many people stand in Arafat? May Allah unite us in Arafat again. I mean, how many people stand in the mountain Jabal Arafat? SubhanAllah, millions of people. Different languages, different colors, different ethnicities. But everyone is asking for one thing. Ya Allah, forgive my sins. Ya Allah, give me give maghfirah. It doesn't matter you are from the U.S., you're from Europe, you're from Egypt, you're from Pakistan, you're from Bangladesh. It does not matter. Every single person has to stand there. Every single person. There is no exception. Not because you're an American, you're not going to stand in Arafat. I'm an American. I have an exemption. No. 
you have to stand there. You're a doctor, stand there. You have whatever job, you have to stand there. Every single person wearing the same clothes, asking the one Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a social aspect that people meet together. There is no superiority, as the Rasulullah said, there is no superiority for an Arab over an Arab, or a black over white, or white over black, except with Amal al Salih. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, la yanzur ila suwarikum. He doesn't care how, how beautiful, how handsome you look, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks at your Amal and your Qalb. All right? On the day of Arafat, Ikhwani, people are standing there. A lot of them are going to be accepted, but some of them will be rejected. And that is going to happen in the Day of Judgment. It is hot. It's 48. I mean, Celsius. It's 48 tomorrow and the day after tomorrow. 48, close to 50. May Allah protect them. People are standing under the hot, burning sun. They're waiting, hoping that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive their sins. On the Day of Judgment, you and I will be standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But unfortunately, some will be accepted and many will be rejected. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept everyone who sends the Arafat. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept everyone who sends before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anyone who asks for maghfirah, ya rabbal alameen. Hajj is so beautiful. There are a lot of lessons. If you did not make hajj, make the, inten and the niya, intention for hajj, Allah will make it happen. Allah will make it happen. Allah will make it happen. If you... Here... Uh, because we do this in other masajid. Okay. Okay. Alhamdulillah. Jazakumullah khair. Okay. If you ha if you are longing to go for hajj, but you cannot, you don't have the means financial or physically, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows your heart. Allah sees your heart. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah, will give you the reward of hajj. And there are a lot of things that you can do here in Epic. You get the reward of hajj, inshallah. One of them is what you guys do every Sunday. Correct? Hajj. You sit, inshallah, for Salat al-Fajr. After that, Dhikr, istighfar, no distraction, put your phone away. Pray to Raqqa after this. Hajj wa umrah tamma, 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 inshallah. Okay? But there is one condition. Allah will give you the reward of Hajj. But there is one condition that does not take the pillar away from you. You have to go for Hajj if you can. Don't say, like, ah, oh, the Sheikh said you can perform Hajj in epic, alhamdulillah. La, la, la. It doesn't work this way. This is just the extra reward, inshallah. All right? Allah ghafoor, Allah kareem. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless you. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to unite all of us in hajj, ya rabbal alameen. Allahumma ameen. Barakallahu feekum. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Inna al-muslimina wal-muslimati wal-mu'minina wal-mu'minati wal-qanitina wal-qanitati wal-sadiqina wal-sadiqati wal-sabirina wal-sabirati wal-khashi'ina wal-khashi'at والخاشعين والخاشعات والمتصدقين والمتصدقات والصائمين والصائمات والحافظين فروجهم والحافظات والذاكرين الله كثيرا والذاكرات أعد الله لهم مغفرة وأجرا عظيما